we've got our face sheep face very well underway we still need eyes and ears let's do the ears because I feel like that's gonna really start to bring it into better focus um, you may have a couple of pieces of brown core wool left so um, you can use those but what we're looking for is a very thin but consistent square inch of core wool and then a little bit very thin piece of natural black on top I'm just pulling from the roving and getting this I mean you can see how thin it is and then you might even want a little bit of the dyed black if you want the tips of the ears to go nice and dark you could put a little bit of dyed black at the tip which would be the edge away from you um, and make sure your fibers are running horizontally on your felting surface we have to flip them over and then you can use the tool um, this makes a nice sized ear for this project and it helps keep them consistent what I like to do is just roll that very tip back and put the tool down on it so you've just folded that little tip back and then you can just follow the tool to get that initial triangle stab that down and then you want to round out the rest of the wool so that you get this sort of diamond or almond shape to the ear pick it up and give it a little tug my fibers got a little bit chunky there and then you can take a little bit of the bunny bear that's in the supply pack if you would like and make a pink center and then I like to take the punch tool to ears because it really really felt them really well And I leave this fringe because that's how we're going to attach it. Then you want to fold it at the base, give it a little pinch like a taco, and then felt that down from each side, leaving the fluff there. Let me show you an ear without the tool. Draw the center line, roll that little tip back and then you can actually just draw your ear shape kind of like a diamond and then let the extra wool fall into the center so once your ears are made you're gonna fluff out the fringe at the end. I feel like this needs a little more. Okay. And it's going to go behind that eye bump that we made. And you use the <laughs> fringe. <laughs> all right, all right. Guard dog. You got work to do. You use the fringe to attach the ear. And some sheep have ears that kind of come up, some kind of come down, some really come forward. So you can just look at a picture and decide how you want your sheep to be. Alrighty, got their ears on. Um, their little mouths don't come back super far, so we could take a little bit of natural black and just a real thin little piece and just lay it on here and felt that in to cover that um, seam that might be there from your from your muzzle piece that we made like that 
so their mouth just starts right there. And we need to make an eye. I like to use the, the dyed black, and it's great to have some you smooth on hand. Um, you just need a tiny little piece, and you split it into two, so you have two tiny little pieces. If your piece ends up, um, if your eye ends up too big, you just pull another one and do it again. But um, you can just, let me get some you smooth. This would be a good time for me to tell a joke, I think. Tell a joke. I'm getting some stuff. I'm going to tell, well, I'm going to tell a story. So the other day I happened to walk past a sheep. It, it was in distress. It was really kind of looked like it was dying and struggling to breathe even. Oh, jeez. Where yes. were you? Well, you know, just walking around. <laughs> and I decided I, I, he was in such trouble. I decided to give him... GPR. <laughs> <laughs> that was so sheep GPR. So I've put some U Smooth on my palm to give it some grip and some other kind of schmutz that's on my U Smooth. And I'm going to roll the black in my palms, um, pressing firmly and then roll back and forth and it makes these little seeds. You could also take a little wisp of black and wrap it around a um, toothpick. That gives, makes a nice eye. It gets a lot more firm when you do that and you don't have as much leeway um, or felting give. So I'm going to take these little seeds and I'm going to, coming in at the edges, shape them into a little roundish oval. And I kind of angle my eyes slightly down as they go back. I feel like it needs to be up higher. I'm pulling my eye out <laughs> ah, and putting it up higher. It's like it needs to be up in their head higher. It's so hard to see. Is it hard to see? Well, I super zoomed the best I could. Okay, it's like so much darkness. But it's a lot of dark. Yeah. It'll be easier to see on the lamb, probably. That's better. Oh, look, I accidentally stabbed my other eyeball. I guess I'll put that in while I've got it. Just excuse my hands in the way while I get it stuck. And then we're going to put a little bit of gold, and they actually have believe I'm right about this, um, rectangular irises and rectangular pupils. So we've got some butterscotch here. And I'm going to kind of actually like rip it because <laughs> this is sort of long fiber and I don't, it's going to be hard to work with that long. So I'm making it as short as possible. And then if I roll a little bit in my hand, tiny, tiny bit, try to get it to start to come together before I start stabbing it. Now this, you might want a more fine needle. Oh, this is pretty. It has some green in it. And I'm stabbing it on top of the black and I'm shooting for oval. Fine needles feel like they take forever. Like this. And then on top of that, I want to put another little piece of black to be the pupil. And it's going to be more like a little slit a little line. Are goat eyes similar? Yeah. So then the final touch is with your in your kit you have some white white. It's whiter than the off white. Um, you take a few little fibers and you just roll them 
to start to form a ball and you stab those into a little dot and that kind of starts to bring it to life a little bit. So some final touches would be um, maybe some natural black to cover this ear seam here. And then using the black, you can really define the mouth and the nose some more. And I'll work on this other eye too. But other than that, um, I would put some natural black around the neck. So I'm just going to pull a thin bit, wrap it around the neck, and then we're ready to start adding curls, which is super exciting. I think I'll take a piece and put it across the back of the head here, right where those ears attached, so it'll hide the seam and it'll also um, Put that color there and blend everything together. Sorry for all the barking. You're very excited well, today. Well, there's a lot happening out we there. We did. We did say that at the beginning we warned everybody there was a lot happening today. Okay, now we get to dip into our curls, which is super fun. Um, on the sheep, I like to keep them sort of whole. And then on the lamb, I was fluffing them out so that they create more of this fuzzy look as opposed to the full, um, full locks or ringlets. Everyone's, um, what they get, just, you just might have a little bit of difference in the way they look. But what I basically try to do is find a little section, maybe fluff the ends, the cut end up a little bit, and then lay it on. I, I like to get some on the tops of the legs before I start going crazy on the body. And when I stab it, I just try to encourage volume and curls. Get a little bit on the inside of the leg here. So this just takes some time and it's really fun. I'm not going to I'm not going to do the whole sheep with you, but uh, I'll do some so that you can see how it goes. I like to get some on the inside of the leg too. Like that. And I'll do some at the top of the front leg. If you want to, when you're working with your curls, you can look through your pile and see if there are any that seem smaller than others. Here's an example. This is a pretty large lock. And this is a tighter, smaller lock. And you could set aside the smaller ones for the lamb. But the technique of fuzzing them up um, kind of works great for the lamb anyway. So I'll just put this at the top of this leg. And then I just start usually start on the belly get some locks on the belly not much thought goes into the orientation wait is that the right word <laughs> yes i think <laughs> the direction um i just had like flashbacks to college when we heard that word a lot i just sort of make a fluff and stick it on Stab it onto the sheep, skillfully. Thinking back to university days. <laughs> yes. A lot of opportunity for sheep pun, because you said something about going back, and I had to stifle a giggle. Um, then once I have some fiber on the belly, I will start working on the sides. And so I just find a bunch, tease out any sort of chunky 
Usually it's the cut end that might have more of a kind of chunk to it. Stick it on there and then keep some curls and some dimension when you stab it. So see how I'm kind of taking it and then tucking it so that it, I'm not just stabbing it all flat on there. I'm trying to create um, more interest and dimension. And it doesn't, I mean, don't be afraid to leave stuff sticking out, you know, it's, it's not going to go anywhere. If anything, it's going to stick more, um, when it's handled as it's getting handled. Oh, here's a nice little section of locks. So I will do something around the neck. I like to go just a little bit up the neck. I don't go all the way up to the head. But like I said, there's all different kinds of sheep and they all have different looks. So, so I might go on to the brown a little bit. So anyway, you've got to do your whole sheep like this. The chest, the tops of the legs, the butt, you know, pick a nice piece to put on each side and it'll end up nice and fat and curly like this one.